Good morning. It is 8.43 a.m. on November 12, 2023. I'm going to do a sort of cold recall of something that happened two days ago, a little under two days ago. I found a book recently on the history of Texas laws. It has the first 16 articles of the Constitution as of 1960, which would be before the 1974 Constitutional Convention. Upon reviewing the constitutional elements of the Texas Constitution specific to the executive, the judiciary, and the legislature, I contend and not only have I won my original case from 2017, but I've also won my case regarding my charges against the Texas State Senate. It is additionally important to understand that the manner in which my claims have been substantiated allows for only one judgment that my original charges that the Affordable Care Act was a master contract to commit to a criminal conspiracy and that each state had a choice as to whether or not to subcontract to that master contract also establishes my original allegations of racketeering as legitimate. A specific note has to do with the context within which the state, place, the state marketplace mandate was implemented. My allegations were that specific states were either using existing rackets or had created their own state-based racket in order to implement their specific elements of racketeering under the auspices of being able to get covered under the federal government through the Affordable Care Act. That also includes their litigious efforts. Now, I have already composed what would be necessary for an oral argument and have a foundation for the actual judgment. I've had that for now over 24 hours. My understanding is not only have all of my charges been vindicated, but as I've said, there's only one judgment. There's only one decision that is possible under the circumstances. And unfortunately, my understanding is that actions that were taken yesterday and overnight last night have proven that to be true. Additionally, my charges as alleged upon my appeal in the Southern District of Texas U.S. District Court up to the Supreme Court in October 2017 have also been vindicated, including and especially because of the deceitful manner in which those alleging themselves to be judges and magistrate judges of the federal court in Houston created a separate case under the auspices of a medical claim and refused to disclose this to me, even while they had scheduled a conference call that was to take place on February 12th of 2018. Those specific charges regard federal budget resolution that was proposed in 2017 for the 2018 federal budget cycle charges that I first outlined in October of 2017 and followed up on by 2018, both of which were sent to the Supreme Court of the United States. Where are those actual petitions at this point in time? Today's November 12th of 2023. I have ample information about how by August 12th of 2023, a number of people who had already qualified were supposed to be moving into their houses, including after two or more years of being subjected to illegal speculation by other people who had stolen their identity and had libeled them, including after dispossessing them of the means to support themselves, including their identification documents, including their income, including in connection with other things they would need to take care of themselves while attempting to extort them into drug trafficking and using their efforts at extortion as a justification for continued illegal speculation. Now, when I say speculation, please understand, the charges originally identified in October 2017 applied both to the state of Texas but also to the federal government. Today is November 12th of 2023. That would be three months, more than 90 days after August 12th of 2023. The last of these individuals was to be moved in by November 8th of 2023. What did the federal government do on November 9th of 2023? 
What did the federal government do on November 10th, 2023, for intended delivery tomorrow, November 13th, 2023? And my understanding is the activities that have been commenced this weekend are intended for delivery on the 13th with an understanding of yield on November 15th. That's exactly what the evidence proves. In a later case, that the state allowed to be illegally engaged as an effort to try to retaliate against somebody whose charges had already been proven prior to May of 2019. These are outstanding matters, as I've said. What happened on January 12th of 2021? What happened on January 15th of 2021? What happened on July 12th of 2021? What happened on July 15th of 2021? And in between, what happened on May 15th? 2021? 2020? 2019? 2018? 2017? 2016? 2015? 2014? 2013? 2012? 2011? 2010, 2009, 2008, 2007, 2006, 2005, 2004, 2003, 2002, 2001, 2000, 1999, 1998, 1997, 1996, 1995. Anything before that, I was a minor. 1994, 1993, 1992, 1991, 1990, 1989, 1988, 1987, 1986, 1985, 1984, 1983, 1982, 1981, 1980, 1979, 1978, 1977. Every year, May 15th of every year, since I was born on May 15th of 1977, up through November 15th of 2023. Now, my understanding is there has been some acknowledgement that as of November 15th, of 2021, more than enough evidence had already been provided on numerous levels. You did not have any right to alter the official records or to withhold the official records and to present forgeries or counterfeits instead. The President of the United States does not have that authority. Members of Congress and the Senate do not have that authority and alleged or actual justices of the Supreme Court up to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court does not have that authority.